Yes. Welcome to people of the Cross Church. Yes. We are here to preach, teach, and sing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Him yes. crucified yes. and resurrected. Yes. Amen. 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 He is alive. Yes. Yeah. He did arose. Yes. yes. He is alive today in my heart and in my soul. Amen. And that's where it makes a difference is in my soul. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's what he looks at is your soul. Mm -hmm. Our inner self. And I welcome you today. And I pray that you would get something from him. I turn there's nothing better than discovering who God is. Amen? Amen. 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 I discovered him many years ago, but I rediscovered him in a period of time, a few years ago, that he spoke to me, and I knew he had a plan for my life. But at 14 years old, I knew he had a plan that I just didn't want to accept. And I know there's been many of us that same way. But once I realized that that was the only way for me, and I accepted it, my life changed. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was newborn. Amen. I was recreated in His likeness. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with Him. Because the more you know who He is, the more you experience His peace, His joy, in his transformation in your life. How many wants to be transformed Amen. in his likeness? Amen. 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 I want to be transformed today. Let's stand. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you as a congregation and those that raise their hands. Lord, that we want to accept the fact of our transformation of being more like you. We want to have your joy, your peace, your understanding. Yes, yes. But we want to be transformed most of all. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for changing us from a sinner yes. to being saved and knowing you and having a life that will make a difference, that we will see you someday. Amen. And Father, I love you today. I thank you for your Son yes. that paid the ultimate price upon that cross, yes. Father. And He gave His all that I, I, might be saved for the simple fact of saying yes to You. In Jesus' name we pray today, Lord. Help us. And Holy Spirit, come today. Walk amongst us. Talk with us. And help us to sing praises unto You. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. I am here for one reason today. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to worship Jesus. Amen. I'm here to he hear about His Word. I'm here to learn and sing His praise. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Let's worship Him today, wherever you're at today. Just set aside some time this morning to worship Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Ready? Amen. How many of you have found a new way of living? Amen. Since you've been saved, we've found a new way of living. Amen. So we're going to sing about that today. I found a new way of living. I found a new life in mine.
if we're not going to teach our children about Jesus, they're going to walk out those doors and someone else is going to get a hold of them. And it's just not going to be good. So we need to stand up for the kids and we need to begin to speak Jesus. Begin to speak life. Don't speak negative. They hear enough negative out in the world. Just speak life to those children. Amen. 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 Amen.
is my desire to honor you. All I have with honor, I worship you. Oh 
to encourage you today. He wants to comfort you. He wants to lift you up. Time to praise him. To praise him this morning. Oh, give, oh, Jesus, oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, Jesus, oh, let it get up, hallelujah, oh, Jesus. Again, the Lord says, I am the way, and I am the life. Yes. And he says, look, no other way, right or left, just look unto me. I will take care of every need that you have. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I, feel the, I feel the Lord saying, those who are thirsty, come and drink. Those who are hungry, eat of my bread. And I believe that's what moves the church and what's going to move the church ahead. When people start doing what God wants them to do. When we start stepping out and using are gifts. Many of you have gifts. And they're weak. Yeah. They're dark because you're not using them. And some of you started using them and the light of the beacon is starting to show. And for one, this pastor is grateful. I'm thankful to see you using your gift. Because God did not give us a gift to sit idle. But he gave us a gift to be used. And to be used as often as he's willing to use you in it. Doesn't mean it will happen every service. But it does mean it will happen from time to time. And we are to use his gifts. Amen? Amen. What a wonderful feeling it is here this morning Amen. that the Holy Spirit is here yes. and walking amongst us. Yes. And tap some of you on the shoulder yes. and knock some of you down. Amen. <laughs> I'm not one that believes I walk around the aisles and touch you. You may be seated. And touch you on the forehead or the shoulder or on the hand and you just go down. But I am one that believes when the Holy Spirit touches you and you go down, you go down. Amen. Yeah. Pure and simple. But I also believe when the Holy Spirit moves in Israel, you're not going to get hurt. Amen. Yeah. I've seen people's head hit a bench as hard. You would have thought for sure it split their head wide open, knocked them out, killed them, they're bleeding to death, and they get up and shout, there's nothing wrong. Nothing happened. Because when God's in it, the devil's not part of it. So therefore, he can't hurt you. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good this morning. Yes. All the time. I could just dismiss us right now and we've had church. And I Amen. say that a lot. Amen. But I say it today because the Holy Spirit's already spoken. Amen. He's already worked upon this. He's already yes. walked upon this. Yes. Amen. God wants to use those willing vessels. And if we're not willing to be used, He will move on to a vessel that is willing to be used. We understand that? Yes. I want you to be used if God has called you. I want you to be used. I just want you to make sure it's God. We need to make sure it's God. And how do you do that? The Holy Spirit will tell you. You will know. There will not be a question about it. You will know. When the Holy Spirit speaks. And it kind of be that feeling. A different kind of feeling. But a feeling 
that is so strong the same day that you got saved. And it'll be strong enough you will know when he speaks. I believe that church. There's not a question when the Holy Spirit talks to you. Right. It's just a matter of what we're listening or not. Right. This morning, I want to talk to you just a little bit about it's time for our mindsets to change. If we ever have a mindset and we know it wasn't right, well, what's a mindset, Pastor? It's when we let this control yeah. what we're doing or let the heart even control what we're doing rather than letting the Holy Spirit control what we're doing. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Because I want you to hear what I got to say to you. Our mindset needs to be in tune with God. You know, we can tune a guitar, a piano. You can even tune drums. But tightening up the skins, they have it just a certain way. We can tune our soul this way. Colossians 3 and 2. It says, set your affections on things above and not on things of the earth. That's where our mindset needs to be. It needs to be set on God. Not on what we think, but what He thinks. And I, to me today, I wanted to preach on something that would benefit the new Christian. And at first when this was given to me, I said, well, exactly how is all this going to do? Well, from the very day that we became a Christian, we had to have a new mindset. Things has to change in our lives. But I believe that God is the one that does the change. I do believe that pastors and teachers help along the way, but they need to make sure God is telling them yes. what we're telling them. Yes. Because we need to be very careful. And I want to tell the congregation, stay out of it. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right. They don't need to be told 20 different things. And what they're doing is wrong. And if they can't get it right, then they shouldn't be here. And I've seen it so many times in a church that a new Christian will get ran off That's right. before they had an opportunity to get their feet through the door completely. Yes, amen. And I don't want that, Alan. Christina. I want to teach you about Jesus' love. I want to teach you how much He loves you Amen. Amen. and how much He cares for you. Yes. Amen. So that I see you make it walk through those pearly gates. Amen. Because I'm telling you, the world, as much as we've been told this all our life, is coming to an end. Yes. You don't believe it, just start reading. Just start reading. God's Word. Read in Revelations. My wife and I was talking about something this week. It just happened. God is coming, church. Amen. And He's coming soon. Amen. I said He's coming soon. Amen. I might get called up before I could spend out the rest of my life as an old man. We need to make sure we are ready. Because the other option is not a choice. 
that you want to make. And that's a life changing, that's a mind changing, that's a new mindset. We need to say ready, set, go. And we need to get on that bandwagon and we need to start following Him. We need to start following what it says in His Word. I know you've both been here before and I've directed a couple things at you. But you need to set yourself and read Acts. You need to read Romans. And then you need to start studying in Corinthians. You need to make sure that you get grounded in God's Word. From Romans 6, 7, and 8 through 12, actually, will give you some teachings that will help you get started. You know, the old motorcycle, you had to kickstart. Well, sometimes in life we have to kickstart. And that's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. It says today is, is the day. This is your chance to change everything. To follow the King. To learn who the King is. That's not right here. This just is my notes. Sometimes we get discouraged. Thinking about everything that's going on and going wrong in our lives. New Christians will say, I know I don't need, shouldn't be doing this, but I can't stop. God will help you. Just don't give up. That's all. Just don't give up. Stay with it. He'll help you. Sometimes we go through the day choosing the right mindset, but sometimes we feel like the mind has been kidnapped. You ever felt like you've been kidnapped? You felt you're thinking things in your mind and things are hard and things today didn't go just the way you wanted it to go. And there's things running through your mind that aren't Christian-like. Don't look at me like that. You're, you're, you're human. We don't sit around all day thinking exactly what we should be thinking. Thinking of all godly things. And sometimes we sit around thinking on worldly things. Right. And we need to make sure when we do that we ask God to help us. Yes. Change that mindset. Don't let that control your life. But let your life be controlled by Him. We look to God and not to man. Any of you ever look to man? Yep. And somebody recently saying, well, yeah, I'm looking to you. No, you don't. Don't look to me. Look to God. Because I'm going to stumble and you're going to stumble right behind me. That's right. You make the same mistake I make if you do that. You don't need to make my mistakes. And I don't want to make yours. We need to make sure we're following God in His footsteps. And when we stumble and we know we stumble, we just ask Him for forgiveness and ask Him to continue to show you His way because that's the only way that is right. That's the only way that is good all the time. Is God's way, pure and simple. We need to make sure that when we get kidnapped, that we get away. And it's your choice. Just like salvation was your choice. I can't do it for you. I'm not with you all the time. Nor do I want to be. <laughs> we find it funny, but you don't want to be with me all the time either. <laughs> and sometimes we may feel like God's correcting us all the time. Well, why is He correcting you? Because you're doing something wrong. 
because we did something stupid. But he does it in love. He does it letting you know that I love you so much that I don't want to see you doing this because I don't want you missing heaven. Because my Father's prepared a place for you. Streets of gold. Yeah. Doors of jasper and pearl. Yeah. He's creating something for you. And the only way you will ever see it is to stay in tune with Him. Keeping the right mindset. We don't want to lose out. What do I do? I had to do. Encouraging you to do. I took those thoughts captive and I chose to focus on God's promises rather than following my problems. Because when we continue looking at our mindset, we're looking at problems and situations that we've either had in the past or we just had, and we tend to let our mind dwell on those things. And those things aren't good for you. But rather, we, what's the word say? We are to dwell on the house of the Lord. We're to dwell on Him. How do I get out of that? Just start saying it. Just start saying it. Just sing my praises. Sing my praises. Start thanking me. Start giving me praise. You ever give somebody a praise on their back and beforehand they were all down and all of a sudden you told them what a good job they did or whatever or pat them on the back so to speak and all of a sudden you see this big smile on their face and it's like they could conquer the world yes amen huh yes amen that's what jesus wants to do for you he wants you to feel like that you can conquer the world you can come against the devil and you can focus on Him rather than focusing on the enemy. I often catch myself, and I catch myself, or I'll tell somebody, they're starting to tell me just what a bad day and, and how I'm hurting and this and that. And I say, wait a minute. Why are you giving the devil praise? Why are you giving him glory and honor? That's a wrong mindset. We are to give Him honor, <coughs> Him glory. If you think negative, you're going to live negative. Amen. You think positive, you're going to think, live positive. Yes. You think Jesus, you're going to live Jesus. Amen. Well, you're awfully quiet this morning. Your must, pen must be writing a whole lot of notes there. telling you why we slip up when we have problems in life of following Jesus. It's because we're thinking on the negative. We're not thinking on what He's done for you. My wife reminded me of a story and she said it this morning to someone. That she walked into the old church, and she said it here recently, I do believe, but I'm going to say it again. She walked into the old church, and she heard God tell her this. If I never do anything else for you, I saved you. Amen. Yeah. I saved you. What a greater gift that we can have to know that we are saved and we're on our way to heaven. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen? And that when we see our Father and He looks down in that book where the Lamb's book of life and where the, where the names are written down and He looks down there and He sees your name. He sees Allie. He sees Kim. He sees Jesse. It will be worth it all when that happens. Yeah. There will be no question to why 
you walked with Jesus and you served Him. It's because you stood up for Him in the thick and the thin. When it got rough, when the tough gets going, the, t the tougher we need to get. Amen. My dad used to say, Amen? Amen? We need to get tougher. When, that, when the enemy comes against us, we need to rear up right back at him and tell him where to go. You hear me? Yes. Amen. He has no control over your life or over your mindset unless you allow him to. That's right. Yes. Amen. You understanding this morning? Yes. Right. The devil cannot rule your life. Amen. Amen. Unless. You allow it. It's your choice to who you choose and to who you're going to follow. I can't make you do one or the other. And they can't beat me and put a chip in me and tell me who I'm going to follow. You hear me? They cannot tell me no matter what they want to do. I tell my kids, or we've told the kids, that when time comes and you're still here, and they tell you they're going to put your head on that chopping block, unless you let them put that 666 and the code, whatever code they're giving you, in your wrist, you tell them no. They're going to kill you anyway. Yeah. I'm going to lay my head down and I'm going to say, Lord, here I come. Amen. Because the second they hit that, the Lord, I am. Here I am. But I'm going to tell you something. If it ever came that they beat you, that they stoned you, that they drowned you, don't say yes to the enemy. mindset. We need to have our mindset strong enough in God's Word that we know no matter what comes or what goes. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it's happening in some parts of the world. I'm telling you that right now. Christians are being executed. Pastors are being executed. People going to Bible study is being executed. I heard the story told. This lady, she was going to an underground Bible study over in Europe somewhere. Supposedly a very true story. And she no longer got out of the house and walked down the block and turned the corner. And there, took, there stood the guards. from the country they were in that demanded they could not go to Bible study. They could not be a Christian. They could not pronounce God as their Savior. And the centurion said, where are you going? And she knew if she told them, I'm going to Bible study. I'm a Christian. She was a dead woman. She thought, she prayed to Jesus. And she says, and he asked her again in a gruff voice, and she says, I'm going to my brother's birthday party. Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. His birthday party. She didn't lie. She was going to celebrate him. He's going to celebrate his birth. She didn't lie. And he told her, go on. The Holy Spirit can give you the right answers. Yes, he can. But no matter what happens anyway, no matter what comes, we need to stand for him. 
We need to make sure that we have the right mindset. And the only way we can have that is by sticking with Him. By staying with Him. With everything. Whatever thing that are in your life, you just need to give them to God. He will help you with them. Always. He will always be there no matter what it is. With anything. Everything that's in your life. Whatever your situation is. Give it to Him. He'll handle it for you. You can't handle it? Well, just let Him do it. You know? Sometimes there are many things in our life as a Christian we are just not willing to let Christ handle. We want to take care of them ourselves. But He says, I've already taken care of it for you. I've already took care of it for you. There were some prophetic words here this morning. <coughs> You need to trust God in what we're saying. And if it doesn't happen in this lifetime, it will happen over there. Yeah. This life is short. Most of us in here, and I just say most of us in here, if we lived another 20 or 25 years, We've gone, some of us have gone way past our time, but the rest of you have gone past yours. We don't know what tomorrow holds. Give it to Him. Trust God. He's in control, not us. If we will allow Him to be in control, that is where our problem, our inner self, our man, comes out. Oh, I can do it. Right? Yes. You ever said that? Yes. I can do it? Yeah. We need to let Christ do it because He's already promised that He'll do it for you. And when He does it for us, you've got instant victory. We don't have to worry about, well, did I do it right? Am I going to get victory out of this? Or am I going to just keep on suffering? And it doesn't have to be really suffering. It can be for anything. It can be for material things. It can be for things that we know we shouldn't do. It can be for things that we know we should do. Mindset, mind control. As the world looks at it, it's mind over matter. I look at it Christ over matter. I look at it a little bit different. Christ over matter. Because Christ in my life should be the one that's in control of my life. If I allow Him to control my life, I will make a whole lot less mistakes as I walk through this life. Amen? Amen. And I want Christ to control my life. As a pastor, I want to be beneficial in helping you to let Christ work in your life. I want to give you encouraging words that you will accept and know that if I follow Christ, I will have a better life. We can be overcomers of whatever comes in our life that we need to be before we follow through Christ. I can think sometimes I was discouraged and I kept taking and thinking about everything that was going wrong. You know, Paul, the apostle gives us solutions in Colossians, as you see, 
on your minds and not for earthly things. But when you feel unloved and unappreciated, you can set your mind on the truth that God loves you unconditionally. Jeremiah 31 and 3. God loves you unconditionally. He doesn't bring up the things of the past. He doesn't beat you down and say, oh, what a terrible person you were. And I'm going to still hold that against you. But the day you said yes to Jesus Christ, those things were to be thought of no more. Amen. Those are things of the past. Yes. Those are things that the devil cannot tempt you about and tell you why do you think you're worthy. Look at what you did. Because Christ don't see them anymore. So why should you? Why do you beat yourself up about it? Some of you Christians have been beating yourself up about things for years. Give it up! Give it up! How can I tell new Christians to give it up? And i got Christians who've been here for years and can't give it up. Church, the Bible says give it up. Because he doesn't remember it anymore. He doesn't know what you're talking about. That's how much he loved you. He already forgot about it. The second you said, yes, Lord. Thank you for coming into my heart. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. Give it up. I'm telling you today, church, give up all the old things. Tell the devil where to go and Satan, get behind me and leave me alone. Amen. Jesus is in charge of my life. And He is in control of my life. Not you. Give it up. Unconditionally. Jeremiah 31 and 3. When it looks like there's no way forward, you can set your mind on the promises that God will make a way Amen. where there seemeth to be no way. God will make a way. Amen. You need to put your hands in the hands of the man from Galilee. Yes. Yes. You hear me this morning? There's only one that can take care of you and that's Jesus Christ, Amen. your Lord and your Savior. Amen. He forgave you he can heal you. He can take care of your bills. He can set your path on the righteousness way of His life for your life. Amen. Amen. We just need to trust Him. Isaiah 43 and 19. You can read it over and over. Isaiah 43 and 19. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. Put your hands in the hand of the man from Galilee. Yes. You know, he parted those waters. Because Moses was listening to it. But so was the devil. The devil had a plan. He ran them into the river. He had the Roman centurion guards and the whole army coming after him to drop them off into the sea and kill them all. But God parted the waters on dry land. There wasn't just one time. There was multiples there. He parted it on dry land that should have been muck that nobody could have walked through for nothing. They got to the other side for dry ground. Then he brought the water back and drowned the whole entire Roman army. Amen? Amen. The king with it. He told him, strike the rock. There was water. You need you need him to park some waters for you? Just talk to the man. Talk to Jesus, church. I'm telling you where the answer is. When you begin to wonder if you ever overcome what you've been, 
in the past. So I'm directing some things here. Talked about already. But I got the scripture for you. Things of the past and through the past. You can set your mind on the truth that God will restore everything you have lost. Isaiah 61 and 7. God is a restorer. With a right mindset, God will restore everything in your life. He will give you back more than you ever had. Now I'm going to preface it this with something. God will give you back more than you ever had in your life time before. And somebody said, but I had this, 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 and this. But you didn't have salvation. Yes, amen. You had the greatest gift of all that money can't buy. Amen. I said money can't buy. Right. I don't care how much money you got. That's right. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Money can't buy it. I had a very good friend of mine <coughs> named Larry. I preached to him all the time. He was at Venice, so we needed to preach to him a little bit. And he tried to preach back, and I just quoted him some scriptures. And he'd go and read them, he'd come back, and I'd quote them to him again. But he was a good friend. His dad retired from the junk business. He lived on what coming out of Merced, going towards uh, Dusty. What, 33? Yes, 140. Just before you get to the flashing red light, he lived on the right hand side. Well, he had about two and a half acres. About an acre of it was nothing but iron, metal and things. And back when he retired, Larry said, what do you see out there? I said, I see a whole bunch of junk. He says, when my dad retired, that was a half a million dollars in there. He said, now it's well over a million dollars in there. That junk was worth the money. So much iron dollars per pound of iron, and he had tens of thousands of pounds of iron. It was worth a lot of money. But that's where he set his goal. That was his goal. Because he didn't know man. He didn't know Jesus. He put his state in that. I have something that's much greater yes, yes. that I've set my stake in. And that's the Word of Christ. And that's the salvation He's given me. And if you have gotten salvation, you have the greatest gift yes. that ever could be given to any man. And when I speak man, I mean man, woman, child, whomever you are, because that's how the Bible refers to man. Is everybody. Man and woman are the same in the world. So today, I'm telling you, you need to make sure you have your right mindset every day of your life that you know to where you are going. And I'm not saying when we make a mistake that we're going to go to hell. I'm not saying that. But we do need to ask God for forgiveness when we make mistakes. Because He receives us over and over and over. He loved you so much that He gave His life for you. The wrong mindset keeps us stuck in life. Not moving forward into the good things God has planned for us or for you. But right mindset, godly mindsets, 
are the key to the living life that Jesus came to give us. He gave his life that he can give us eternal life. And eternal life is what we're here on this earth for. No other reason. If you think you are here for something else, it's wrong. And we are here to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to those about us. Each and every one of you are supposed to be ministers for Jesus Christ. Do we understand that? You do not have to be licensed or ordained to give what God wants us to give to others. You do it through love, through acts of kindness, and showing them what a Christian is supposed to be. How many times you've heard somebody say, if that's a Christian, why would I want to be a Christian? They act just like me. They're no different than me. I want to look at me and say, Boy, he is different. He is strange. That's okay with me. That should be okay with you. Yes. But I also want them to say, you know what? That person is so kind. He's so considerate. Can they say that about us? Can they say that about the church today? They should be able to, but I'm sad to say most of the time they can. Last thing here. You know, the Israelites, when they experienced it, God promised the land for them. But they spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness. Do you know why they spent that in the wilderness? I'm not going to get into all that. But sometimes we spend our life in the wilderness rather than spending our life for the living, for what God has for you, for us to know what needs to be done. It says, look, I, I'm sitting here and look down. Let us move, moving on to our changing mindset. What God did for me, He can do for you. Ask Him how to show you. Anything but the wilderness mentality. We don't want to be in the wilderness mentality. But there is keeping in you a struck in life to help you make the necessary change that you can discover an amazing life in Jesus and what He has promised in His Word to you. He has many promises in the Word that He would like to use you and give to you. But He can't give it to us when we're not in the right mindset. When we're not following Him, it's hard for it to be given. You ever give somebody a gift that you didn't want to give because you didn't think they were worth it? Maybe sometime God feels that way about you. Huh? That would be because you kept the will of his mindset. Instead of looking on him. Instead of looking at his word. I want to say that I want to know that I'm working for Christ and what he gives me because I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the right, wrong thing. I'm doing the right thing. I'm working for Him and I'm striving to be a better Christian each and every day. It might not be a salvation message, but I want to stand here that everybody stand this morning. I want everybody to bow their hands. As you could say, maybe pastor or maybe preacher. I might not understand everything you're saying. In fact, I, I don't understand. 
but I understand enough that I want a right mindset. That I don't want to be following what the world has given me. Or maybe you'll say, I'm a Christian and I've been following some wrong mindsets. And I need help to follow the right mindset. I need to follow you, Jesus. And I want to follow you in a greater way. I want to know that greatest love of all to the fullest. And the way I could do that is that I'm getting closer to you each and every day. I need help getting there. It doesn't mean you've done something terrible. It doesn't mean you're sinning. It just means you're not following Christ in the way that you need to. I'm not saying that at all. And maybe for some, maybe it does put you in that category. I don't know. I don't know where you're at. I think I know where people are at. And then sometimes I get fooled. I get a little bit surprised. So this morning, would there just be one lift their hand? Maybe I'd like to say yes to Jesus. I'd just like to say that whatever it is that you guys have, I don't understand it, but I want to follow it. I want to know who this man is that you're talking about. I want to know Jesus. I want Him in my heart and my life. I want to understand what you have and what you feel. I want to feel the same thing. There's just one person this morning. Offering church, any others in any category that was mentioned, or you've got your own category. You know, I need God to help me that He keeps my mindset focused on Him and I'm raising my hand. I want more focused on Him. I want to be more focused on Christ. I want to follow Him more that I can represent Him in a greater way. Yes, I see the hand. I see another hand. I see hands. I see hands all over the building and I thank you for that. I thank you for being honest with yourselves. You know, that's what we need to be. The first thing is about being a Christian is being honest. You know, some people say, well, it's just a little white lie. I'm here to tell you from a murder to a white lie is a sin. And in God's word, it says sin will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So no matter what it is, we need to make sure we have things set and our minds and focused upon Him. Our Heavenly Father this morning, I want to thank You for those that raise their hands. Lord, I would pray that whatever this mindset that they need help with, or whatever situation it might be, Father God, that You would reach down in that special way and help them. Give them a special help, God, that only You can give to them. Through that Holy Spirit, Father, I pray for those and each and every one that lifted their hand today. God, that this week you will show them that you open that door or you close that door in whichever case it may be. But Father, that you are with them, you are walking with them, and you see them, and you recognize them. And Father God, today I thank you for everyone that's here and the Holy Spirit that was here today. I am so thankful that you came to be with us today. Lord, go with us out this week and help us as we walk to wherever we go. That we're mindful of you and we represent you wherever we go. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all said, Amen. Amen.